Hi guys, it's Chetz and today I want to show you how to use physical to virtual machine conversion. You might uh, be uh, in a situation where you need to convert few virtual machines from Hyper-V, which none of the co uh, uh, conversion tools in Linux uh, support convers uh, conversion directly like Zen, VMware, stuff like that. Or you might want to convert a physical machine and you want to convert it to a virtual machine to run it in Red Hat Virtualization, Overt, OpenStack, or in uh, the Virtual Machine Manager that comes with CentOS, Red Hat, Fedora, uh, Ubuntu, SUSE, and other uh, Linux distributions. Since I don't have a physical machine to convert, I'm going to use a virtual machine. As you can see here, this is my Windows 7, and this is the Windows 7. I just installed it. Nothing uh, here is interesting. It's it just a standard uh, virtual machine that I'll pretend to be a physical machine. The only thing that I did here is that in order to make it work and wor work fast is that I installed the Vertio drivers. Uh, it shouldn't really matter because basically if this uh, machine doesn't have the drivers, the conversion tool Basically, what it does is when you boot the image, and I'll talk about the image in a second, will inject the drivers, and if it's a Linux uh, machine and not a Windows machine, it will basically um, analyze, analyze all the disk and remove parts that are not needed. For example, if you're not using iSCSI, for example, in your virtual machine, it will remove it from the init uh, part in the Linux S and uh, other stuff. It basically checks what are you using in the Linux machine and what you're not using, it will remove to reduce the system without uh, doing any damage or anything. It's completely safe. I've tried it thousands of times. So I have this machine right now and I want to convert it to a virtual machine so I'll do I'll perform shutdown now if you're in Linux on Fedora, Red Hat or CentOS I don't know the names about other distribution but there is a distrib uh, there is let me see the name uh, let's see yeah the package is called vert P2V Maker. You'll need to install this part. And all you have to do basically is run vert P2V Make and disk. You can basically create um, a kickstart if you want uh, to use uh, the kickstart method, but I prefer the simply the disk. Now we'll need to tell it where to create it. I already created it, but basically you can do minus O and give it a name. It will create a hard disk image and that will be a bootable hard disk image that will, uh, in the case of my case, since I have my Windows 7 as a virtual machine, I just pop it as an another hard disk and I'll prioritize the boot to be that uh, this uh, hard disk image that I'm creating right now will be the first one to boot. And on a physical machine, since you can't boot from a virtual hard disk, you'll need the disk on key, at least eight gig. You'll need eight gigabytes uh, disk on key because the image itself, uh, while in physically it's small, it expands to six gigs. It's pretty big. And what you'll need to do is basically when you insert your disk on key, you can use ls-l dev disk by id slash usb asterisk. And since I don't have a disk on key right now, no such file directory, but if I uh, have I inserted a disk on key, you'll see here the name and the linked to the device name. So for example, sdc, sdd. 
And in that case, so I, all I had to do is make disk vert dash p2v dash make dash disk minus o dev sdc. And this will basically create it. But I don't want to create it right now. I don't have a disk on key. So let's go to the virtual machine manager. Now that I have the Windows 7 shut down, I've already added the image that I've created. And in the boot option, I enabled boot menu. So this is just for the testing. In a physical uh, machine, you'll probably have something like press F12 when you're powering the machine to select a uh, boot device. F12 or F11, F2, I don't know. Or maybe in the BIOS. So it depends on your machine. There is a way to boot from not the default hard disk, non-default. And this is what you need to do. With the disk on key, you probably will see your disk on key name right there. So you can select it. So let's boot it. I'll have a menu, first escape for boot menu, and I'll select the first one, Vertio disk. And right now, this is the new hard disk image. It basically takes my uh, host operating system on my machine here, my physical uh, Fedora machine, and it based on that, it created uh, the, um, the hard disk image. Now, whether you like Fedora or not, it has this uh, specific uh, version 29 has all the drivers that you need, whatever hard, uh, hardware that you have, networking, uh, disks, SCSI, um, SCSI, okay, SAS, SATA, whatever. So it will recognize uh, all the hardware inside and that will help in the conversion. So I'll select this uh, specific kernel to boot because in this part, in this one, I've made some changes to make it uh, basically uh, do the conversion automatically. So let's create, he uh, let's uh, select this one. This will boot the Linux. And once it's finished, this is what you'll get. Now we'll need to tell it on which machine, the virtual machine manager, uh, your virt, your uh, Red Hat virtualization, your uh, virt, OpenStack, etc., is running. And now each one of them has its own parameters to enter. I'm not going to get into this uh, in this uh, video. Perhaps uh, if people want, I'll create uh, a video how to use it on Ovirt, for example, to convert a virtual uh, physical machine directly to Ovirt. It should be pretty simple, almost the same as these instructions. You just need to change a parameter or two. Uh, now, you'll need a direct root login to the virtual machine, um, your server, which runs the virtual machine manager. In this case, I allowed root login and I'm typing my password and I'm clicking test connection. Now, one thing that uh, you'll need to make sure is that uh, there is a DHCP running somewhere that will allow you to get an IP or else you'll need to do a configuration network. Since I have a DHCP running on another server, it gets an IP and everything else. You can see it if I will type here IPA, and as you can see, this is the IP that the machine got. Okay, I'll click next. And sometimes, uh, especially in Linux uh, distribution, it will uh, detect the host name of that machine and it will uh, suggest a name based on that host machine. Since it's Windows, it gives me localhost. Okay, I'll call it vert win 7 and uh, it detects that I have two, um, two CPU cores and two gigabytes, which is true. Now, since I want to uh, add it directly, I'll just select the libvirt 
and I want uh, this will basically register it to the virtual uh, machine manager, deliver it that my physical machine is running in order to run those virtual machines here as you can see them here. So here this uh, server is running uh, LiveVirt and is running all these virtual machines. So I'm connected to it, to vNode 1. And basically you just erase everything here, you type here QCal2 and nothing else. You just do a start conversion. Now, if you want to test it and you don't have a physical machine and you try to follow my instructions, you might get an error that uh, it needs the Windows drivers in order to inject them to the new guest VM. And in order to get that, uh, I'll post a link where you can download the RPM directly again uh, if you're using Ubuntu, SUSE, whatever look for a virtio-win uh, RPM or package or deb or any repository and install it on the machine like my vNode 1 install it there so it can inject from there to the new VM the Windows drivers or else you might have some problems now this conversion, uh, it works pretty well on Windows 8 and 10 and uh, 2012, 2016. I'm not sure about 2008. I'm pretty sure it in 2003, uh, Windows Server 2003, it doesn't work. And Windows XP has been deprecated in terms of virtual machines, but you might still be able to run it and hunt for the, some old drivers and install it. But I'm not sure the conversion will work well. I haven't tried uh, Windows XP to convert. That's the earliest ISO that I have, this Windows 7, and that's what I'm using. So the conversion was successful. I click OK and I hear I click shut down and not reboot. OK, it's shutting down the machine and it's off. We can close this window. We can go back to virtual machine manager. And here, as you see, it registered a new vert win 7 machine that we just created. I'm not going to run it. I need to make some modifications to it. Yeah, and I click the wrong key. Sorry. Okay, um, here in the NIC, uh, the device model, uh, basically since I installed the Vert.io, uh, it should be, it should work okay, uh, but it might not. Uh, I'm not sure about this one. Uh, virtual network. Uh, basically, if you're working with few machines with uh, virtual, uh, with libvirt, uh, the best way would be either to use NAT, but that way you can only access it locally, or create a bridge from your wired Ethernet connection. And I've created a bridge, and I'm basically mapping the bridge, so it will create um, VNAT, uh, sorry, VNET. Vinet 0, zero Vinet 1, depends on your machine. And uh, basically right now it doesn't have any IP, so I can ignore this one. Uh, display, yes, apply please. Uh, display uh, here, change it to Spice, or else it will complain about Pulse Audio. Uh, what else? Video Excel should be okay for minimum stuff, don't expect to run DirectX on it or stuff like that. In Windows 10, if you want to pass, uh, pass through your GPU, you might need to do a few additional changes, but I'm not going to uh, expand on it in this video. It's, uh, maybe I'll make another video. Right now I don't have a second GPU to connect and uh, demonstrate it. What else? Uh, the disk is okay. Video Excel should be okay. This machine should be working. Don't start repair. 
I'll need to press left control alt and do a resize. Okay. As you can see those black borders, it means it didn't install the drivers yet. Since it created a new SID and everything, it needs to install drivers. And as you can see, it started to install. This device can perform faster. No kidding. Okay, a restart is required. Okay, we'll do a restart. Uh, restart. Thank goodness the boot is pretty fast. It's a pretty new Windows 7 I just installed a few hours ago. And if everything works okay, there should be a network interface and it works. And uh, it might probably ask to install. Oh, yeah. I think I forgot something. Yeah. Audio. We might need audio. So we'll uh, click sound, click ICH9. Okay, in the next shutdown. Okay. Fortunately, we divert. Uh, vert manager and everything I have to basically shut the machine down and uh, power it on instead of restart go figure okay as you can see no black borders drivers uninstalled and I don't know if this microphone got it but the Windows is uh, seems to work, and our sounds, etc. Uh, I don't know. You'll have to trust me about this one. <laughs> uh, I can uh, resize, but I don't think that uh, it's no, it's not a dynamic. Uh, I'll select the resolution. I don't know. Okay, keep it. Okay. Let's say Facebook. Yeah, everything looks okay. Uh, all the commercials and everything. I'm from Israel, that's why you see Hebrew. And that's it. Right now, this machine, I'll do a res uh, resize to VM. This is the new Windows 7, which I converted from so-called uh, physical machine. And uh, as you can see, um, I didn't have to install any application. And contrary to uh, VMware uh, converter, this tool, the Vert P2V, did uh, actually a good job of injecting the drivers and everything else. I didn't have to install the CD. And as you can see here, there is uh, there is no CD-ROM here or anything else to install drivers from. It injected it already. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments, suggestions, I would like to hear it in the comments below. And Hope you liked the video, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks, and bye.